Hello, and welcome to this year's Advent study course from New Life Baptist Church. You can watch these twice a week between now and the end of the year here on YouTube. And if you'd like a printed or electronic copy of the daily notes to read, then click on the link below. Those on our mailing list will automatically receive an email. If you're just watching these videos, then you might like to have something near to hand to make some notes of the Bible passages so that you can read them at a later stage. Our theme for Advent this year looks at the character of Christ. Luke tells us in his Gospel, a certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. Now, goodness is just one of the many character traits we look for in people. But what does it mean to be a good person? Do we judge how good someone is by what they do? Well, in part, yes. But it's possible to do good things without necessarily being a good person. Prayer is good. But Jesus criticised those who stood up and prayed long and fancy prayers just to look good to others rather than to communicate honestly with God. It's good to be generous, but Jesus criticised the wealthy who made a show of giving large amounts of money to the temple at the time, but which really cost them little. Um, she pra he praised a widow who gave very little, but it was all she had. It's not just what we do that makes us good, but the motivation that lies behind it. God wants us not just to do good, but to have a good character. A dictionary gives the meaning of character as the particular combination of qualities a person or a place has that makes them different from others. So as we move through the season of Advent, let's look at some of the aspects of the character of Jesus and ask ourselves what makes him different from others and what can we do to have a Christ-like character. Let's start by looking at Christ's eternal character. There are many passages that refer to this. You could look at Genesis 1, Colossians 1, 15 to 20, and 2, 6 to 15, Exodus 3, 1 to 14, and John 8, 48 to 59. We'll look at some of these. As the words of a song puts it, let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. And this week we think about a characteristic of Jesus that's rather different to the rest of us, for he is eternal. In Genesis 1.26, we read, Let us make mankind in our image. And throughout Genesis 1, the writer uses the plural Hebrew word Elohim to refer to God. And here specifically, he refers to God saying, Let us and our image. For Christians, this is the first evidence in the Bible of the existence of God as Trinity. Three persons in one being, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul confirms the idea when he writes to the Colossians saying, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus didn't come into being when he was born in a stable on that first Christmas. He was there before the universe began. He was an integral part of the creative process by which God brought the universe into being. And he reigns with the Father in heaven since his resurrection. Jesus is eternal. Getting our heads around the idea of God is Trinity is difficult. How can there be one God but in three persons? Down through the years, people have tried to come up with physical examples to try and describe something which is really beyond our full understanding. But one I quite like is the idea of ice. Ice, the solid, water, the liquid, and water vapour. Touch a piece of ice and it feels wet. And although you cannot see it, it's also giving off water vapour into the air. And yet all three forms simultaneously exist and are exactly the same chemically. H2O, water. The analogy is incomplete and has many flaws, but 
Perhaps it helps us get some idea of one God in three persons. And Jesus demonstrates the character of God for us to see. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Colossians 2.9 In John 8, we find what is probably the closest that Jesus comes to publicly stating that although he is human, he is also God. Back in the story of Moses and the burning bush, Moses asked God what his name was, and God replied, I am who I am. In Hebrew, this is equivalent to YHWH, which can be translated in a variety of ways. It's part of the verb to be, so it's often translated as I am. It's the most common name of God used in the Bible, used 6,823 times, found in all the books of the Old Testament except Ecclesiastes, Esther, and Song of Songs. In English translations, it appears as Lord in capital letters to distinguish it from other Hebrew words for God. The vowels are left out, but it's often thought to be Yahweh, and some translations use this form. It's also how the word Jehovah was derived. We don't know the exact words that Jesus used when he says, before Abraham was, I am. Did he speak Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek? In John's Gospel, the Greek word is used for I am, not the Hebrew. But it's clear from the listeners, this listener reaction that they realised the significance of what Jesus was saying and they immediately tried to stone him for blasphemy. By taking the name of God, Jesus was stating that he is one with God. Some things to do. What difference does it make to you to know that Jesus is eternal? How does this affect the way you think about Christmas? In what ways should your knowledge of Jesus' eternal character affect how you pray? See if you can come up with other illustrations that try to explain the Trinity. Many people have not or do not believe that Jesus is God in bodily form. Is this important to you to believe? And why? If Jesus is not God, how would this change our understanding of the salvation he offers us? The context in which God gives his name to Moses is that God promises, I will be with you. He's effectively saying, I am the God who will be with you. This promise wasn't just to Moses, but it's also to us. At his ascension, Jesus said to his disciples, I am with you always. How aware are you of God's presence throughout the day? Why not set yourself the task of talking to God at least once every 30 minutes during each day? See how many days you can keep it up. It can be just a quick thank you, Lord, or a please give me the words to say, or please help me with this job. Whatever it is, try and give it a go. Perhaps you already do.